Hi, my name is Catherine Roseland here with Boarding Geek TV at Spiel 2013. I'm joined today by uh, Rustin Wilkinson. Yep, thank you very uh, much. From loudtobellit.fi, and we're here to talk about Nations, the new game. Yep, this is a civilization building game, um, uh, all about indirect interaction and competing for resources and development, uh, going from the ancient ages up until the brink of World War One. Okay. So a nice long span. Yes, yes. <laughs> so it covers the game covers four ages. So that's what we see here. Um, so is it is it included? Uh, there's a camera that comes yep. down. So th these cars are for age one, age two, age three, and age four. And um, at the start of the game, let's put this up here and there. So you, at the start of the game, you put out uh, all, all the materials and starting materials for each player and you put out cards here on the card display mm -hmm. and every round has an introductory phase then the main action phase and then a resolution phase uh, so the main part of the game is this action phase where the players take turns and one small short turn then goes around the table in the player order so not just around the table but in the actual player order and the player order is something you compete for I see. and uh, the, the, the main actions that you do, you buy cards from the card display and you move workers that you have in your nation, in your, in your realm, the, here in your resource area. You move them onto buildings or onto um, uh, military and then you get effects from that. Yeah. But um, that's something you can do as an action. So placing one, yeah, onto pla these areas pla placing here. one worker onto these here, this area here, that's one action. That's what you can do in your turn. Okay. And the last thing that you can do, you can hire, hire an architect like this and build one step of a wonder. So the number of things that you can do is, the number of different things that you can do is quite small, but the interactions that appear from, from playing this, do, doing these small short actions are extremely varied. And you, you, you compete for lots of different positions uh, regarding what cards you're playing, you're, you're buying, what cards you want in your in your nation, what you want to deploy here, and also what you want to um, compete compete for in the historical events that appear at the start. They are uh, near new event phase four here on the maintenance phase. So you you pick up a new event card and then you see what will happen at the end of the round. You have all the, the whole action phase to prepare for this, to either decide to compete for something or try to avoid the effects of something. And uh, that, then it's resolved after everyone has done all their turns. Okay. So this is a game where you see things at the start of the round, you, you compete for it and it, every, all the information during the round is open and then it happens later in that round. So you don't pick a card from a deck and see, oh, I bought this card, let's see what happens. You know in advance, any action you do, you know the effects of it. But the important thing is, what will the other players do? You're competing against the other players, not against the game. And that's a big, big general direction of the game. You're competing against the other players. You want to be, have slightly better than the other players always, but having more, a lot more, that's not really useful. So if someone has, say strength, this is strength here, strength seven, and I have strength eight, then I'm happy. For most things, it's not really useful to have strength 20. You're not competing, uh, mostly you're not competing against the games. There are some effects when you need to beat a certain level, just at that moment. For example, uh, conquering a colony. So you need a, a specific set amount just when you're conquering that colony. But later, when you, are, when you have the colony, you, it doesn't matter, you, you only need to to um, worry about, about yeah, about the worry about the others. Uh, same, same thing with um, stability. This is stability market. You want to be slightly higher than the others. Then it's better for you for for the historical Being events. Being way too far ahead is just going to be a waste waste yeah. of resources. Yeah. So like like this, uh, the Assyrian deportation event. At the end of the round, the the player with the least strength will have to return one worker. So one worker that is. Uh, that, that is here must go back to, to, to the. Um, th this is a quite quite nasty thing. So you, you have to put it back to uh, the available workers. Okay. Uh, so so you want to have higher strength than the others. So you don't want to be the least one for that. And that's something you com 
compete for in the first round of the game is the, if this is taken uh, the first round. Okay, so uh, let's put up the cards yep. and see how, how it looks. So for the first round, we take up these um, event cards from or the, the, the progress cards from the first day, mar marked with a one and a slightly different background than the, than the others. So you can see that. Oh, actually, we uh, we have only put up two um, displays for two players. So for three players, you add in one more column here. For four players, one more. Five players, one more. So we are only using the minimum number of, uh, of cards to put on here. Uh, they weren't very. Oh, they were not shuffled. <laughs> I'll put in uh, one uh, one more of these. Okay, let's give it a little variation. And and the war. Okay, so where is the metal? Yeah. The metal is not okay. But th this should be this or let's put them up. Like that. Mm -hmm. So at the start of the round, yeah, you just do some, do some basic maintenance. You move up the round marker. So the full game is eight rounds. That's what you play. And it's divided into four ages. So two rounds for every age. And you, you start by moving this up, just showing how's the progress in number of rounds going. Okay, yeah. Then you work on the progress cards. You put them up like this. At the end of the round, you, you, you still have what's remaining. But then here at the start of the next round, you put away these two rows, everything here and everything here. They, they are tossed, the top row is moved down, and then you refill with new cars from the current new age. Okay. Or fr from the current age that you're in, or the just new if that's the first round of a new age. And then you grow, and that's a decision that you need to take. And you, you can see what cards are available here. And this is where another aspect of the game that is quite different comes in. It's the difficulty setting here. At the start of the game, you choose your difficulty. And you can, if you are very competitive, all the players together can choose on a difficulty that is the same. But uh, if you have some, uh, one person has played a couple of games and one play, uh, person is new to the game, then it's extremely useful to That's choose a difficult, uh, different difficulty setting here. And it's completely up to the players. Think of it in the same terms as in the civilization computer games. Yeah, where uh, you choose. You, your you level. choose. Okay, how hard do you want to play it? Or? But you could easily be the same level if you yes, wanted to definitely. be. So you definitely. could both be uh, princes and or both be kings. Yep, and it it affects the game quite much. And you can also different make a, a different game for the same group of evenly skilled players. So if you compare on here on the easier setting on chieftain, you will have a much more competitive game um, that, where you can compete for the, the, the victory points given in the uh, historical events, because you will have a lot more resources. If you go down to Emperor, then you will have a more difficult time to keep your nation rolling. Just the basic resource management to get the engine up and running, that will be a lot more difficult here. And so it adds that, a that's very a diff yeah, big it, variation to the game. It varies the game. So the numbers doesn't look like much of a difference, but actually it, may, it makes quite a, quite a bit of a difference. Um, so, depending on the difficulty that you chose here, you, you choose it at, at the beginning of the game, and then you keep it for the full, for the rest of the game. Yeah. You can change it, but here you have a growth section. Either you take a new worker, so from your from your nation display here on your player board, you start with all of these filled up. Then you can take one in this phase, only in this phase. You can increase your number of workers, and you can either take from the stability setting here or from the food setting uh, here. And it's, is that the price of it, basically? Yes, the, but not the price immediately. You don't pay immediately. You just take it, and the payment has to go, go on for every round at the end of the run. So you okay. have to put the worker to good use because that will be a cost, a constant upkeep cost. Yes, yeah, so you have for, to pay for, him for to, the work, to do yeah. the work. Basically. So you can choose to just take a stability work in next turn, next round, you can take another stability work and just take these ones if you produce a lot of stability. Or you can choose to take only food workers if that's more suitable for your, your, your situation. Or, or you, you can, can mix take and match. Yeah. Yeah. So either you, you can choose this or well, one of these. Or if you don't want to grow, then you take a bonus. 
and you choose here money or food or stone same and the same the things as here yeah. so you choose you choose one of these resource sorts if you don't grow so if you take resources you have to choose one category and take of that only so you take yeah like if, if i'm here on um, on prince level three i take three so stone that's my growth ah, section and then you draw a new event and let's see what, what will happen uh, so that, that was the card we had before let's pick another one and if if there are any brown markers here, you add more um, architects to this available architects. But now there were none, so no extra. But depending on the number of plays, on two plays, there is one base architect that's here. So this round, because there are no extra and only two players, one architect. And these are used for building wonders. Okay. And then you can see also what will happen. What will the events be? What will we compete for during this, this round? And we can see the famine level here. So that's something you need to be aware of. And that varies depending on the cards that you draw. What, how hard will you be hit? And you want to have enough food to pay for that. Yeah. And um, then, yeah, you, you fill up the architects depending on this situation. And that's the full preparation phase. So the preparation phase is very quick. Just, OK, out, out with the card, do some upkeep, and then you start, start going. So the first player takes one action on these. So for example, I start with uh, six money. And I want to buy a card. So the, the, the cards cost different amounts depending on the row that we're in. So every card on this row costs one gold, every card here costs two, and every card here costs three. So these are cards that have been out the longest? And these yes, are, yes. Yeah. So they, these will be old cards and cards from the previous age when there is a new age coming and such. Exactly. So they will, they will be on a sort of discount here. Mm -hmm. So let's say I want to buy a card. I want, I want to buy the Sphinx. I want to build on a wonder. So I pay one coin, I pay a three, get two back, take this, and I put it here. These are wonders under construction. Uh, wonders under construction here. So only one wonder can be co under construction at a time. I place it here, my, my turn is over. So that was number one, then it's number two. You take an action. And so I choose to do the same thing, and then I could yeah, uh, You buy. can buy, buy an upgraded military, for example. That's a legionary. And then and I would place that here? Yeah, you can place it anywhere on any, any of these buildings or military. Those are, you place it on top of any of those cards that were there. The old card disappears. It's not lo no longer available. And any workers that were on it must be moved back to your resource area, so you can deploy them again. I see. But you, you place it here, and now this card is available for deployment. So that's your action. You pay for it, you take it, you're done. First player again. Uh, let's say if there were two, work, two architects available in this round, I could pay for the first one here. The, uh, the architect spot, the, the left one first. So I pay two stone. I take an architect, I place it here. That's the first step. In a later stage, and then when it's my turn again, I could, if there were still architects available this round, I could pay for that, pay the two stone again for the next step, and then this wonder is finished. I move it out to my wonder spots, and I get the effects. Only now, when it's the, um, finished, I get the, I get the effects. So the wonder takes three turns to build, basically. Yes. One, one, one to um, buy it, one to build on that step, one to build on that step. And then I have the effects for the rest of the game, yeah. depending on what the effects are, and I get victory points at the, at the end. So you take actions like this, and for, for you, you might want to deploy a legionary. So you pay the, the stone cost. The stone cost here. You pay one stone and put the guy there. Then you get the effects here. So three military strength from each guy here, and minus one food in upkeep per round for, 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 for paying his food. Exactly. And you get a three raid value, so you can buy. And that lets you increase. Uh, yeah. So when you move it here, you increase your st uh, strength immediately. Mm -hmm. So if you have a guy here, three raid value, you can, you can buy a battle, and you, can, you pick one of these resources, as th this one is robbing fr from, from that raid. So. OK, so those are actions. You take them until everyone passes. You flip this over. When you're passed, you're out.
Okay. And then you do the maintenance phase, you produce your resources. So wonders produce, colonies produce, advisors produce, every worker on a, on a building produce, and you, um, you, you keep those resources for the next round, and then you can use them to build up your nation even further. So, and you, you check the player order. Player order is de dependent on yeah, so the strength you, order. So the higher the higher strength, that means you go first. And if you have the same, you check the stability. And if you still have the same, you, you check the previous order. So that's kept. Okay. You check the war. Oh, the, the war. Uh, if someone buys the war, you check the strength of that player. If green player buys the war when on three strength, the war is on three and that stays there for the rest of the round. Everyone at the same or above that strength is okay. Everyone below gets hit by the war, so I have to pay four stone, unless you have stability to mitigate that. So every, le every point of stability decreases that. And regardless of how much stability you have, you get hit by one victor point if you are hit by the war. You can't get away from that unless you have some special abilities. And then you check the event. Check who, who wins or loses on this. Check who wins or loses on this. You check the famine. Everyone has to pay the food. And then if at the end of an age, you check the books because you compete on the books here. Then, and for every nation that has lower amount of books than you, you get victory points. So that okay. happens at this point, end of age one, end of age two, end of age three, end of age four. Okay. And then you start a new round. And you do that for four ages, eight rounds. And then you have a final scoring. It looks like this. You get points for just about everything mm -hmm. in, that, that you have done. So you add, add up what you have done, you, um, you, you mark it down in a, in a score sheet, and the one with the most victory points is the winner of the game. How long will a typical game take? Uh, that depends extremely much on the type of player. On so the if you're prone the level to. Of, uh... Yeah, the, the skill and your experience. But normal game between two, two and three hours. Two and three hours. And how many players can it be? Up to five, from, from one to five. So solo game, there is this stack of stuff uh, and, the, and the die that you use for, for, the, for the solo game. And at five players, there is uh, sm some small changes to make, uh, um, to increase the competition between players at the top and the bottom. So, but but for, for starting out to play the game, it's very much recommended to play three or four players. Yeah. Then after a couple of games, you can play with the advanced cards, the expert cards, and you add those in, you get more variation and more interesting interaction effects that you, that you get from, from those cards that uh, they are not really worse or better, they are just uh, more involved and it's, it's good to get going a bit uh, with them easier ones because then we'll, you will enjoy your first game as well. Yes, so exactly. normally you get into understanding the system after two rounds, the, after the first eight you get to understand oh, how is the interaction uh, happening, how is the mechanics working and such. Thank you very much, that was very Thank interesting. You. It's Nations. Yep. And uh, it's um, presented today, starting to be it's public from today. Thank you very much. Thank you.